back to the stage again and introduce her film, My 58 Uncles. Welcome, director. So much. Okay, thank you so much for your time, for your support. Again, I'm here. So actually, I have only one uncle. I don't have 58 until I met Annie, my sister. This story is about looking for the families for the 58 uncles. Okay, so ever since then, I know this story. I would call them my uncles and proudly tell people I have 58 uncles. And I lead my production team all the way to Phoenix, Arizona, El Paso, Texas to film. And I'm going to do the second film trip again in the later of October. So this is just a trailer. I haven't finished the film yet. But in this trailer, you will have an outline of the story. I hope you will be touched and support Sister Annie, support me, support more people, volunteers from all over the world, continuing tirelessly looking for the families. We still have 28, 28 uncles, family, haven't been found. That's our efforts, that's our goal, to find them to let them know who they are. And thank you. The first group of Chinese students, there were 50 cadets that came. They came from every province in China. And they came here to Thunderbird Field to train as pilots. They're 18 to 21 year olds, and the responsibility of their country is on their shoulders. They had a big mission to fulfill. This is Thunderbird, the field. These are Thunderbirds, the planes. The sky is bright out here in Arizona. It's bright with fighting planes rolling and slicing through the sky. Thunderbird Field is more than just a field, more than just mere aeroplanes. It's a school, one of the schools operated by the United States Army, by our Army, for training the young pilots of our allies as well as our own. Here are Chinese boys. They learn to fly well, these Chinese. They have something to fight for. They remember the smoking ruins of their villages back home. They remember the rape of Nanking. On July 7, 1937, fighting broke out on this bridge between Chinese and Japanese troops. Within days, Japan launched a full-scale invasion of China.北大清华南开大学组成一个西南联大二叔是辅仁大学二年级的时候离开北平然后辗转千里到了云南昆明然后转入西南联大物理系二年级是大师云集的这样一个大学他也可以走这样一条道路但是他选择的是放弃自己的前途去保卫这个国家那他就参军了当然是舍不得了我的奶奶啊我的祖父但是就是
，二叔义无反顾的就走了。A special Life magazine issue that featured the Chinese cadet on the cover, May 4th, 1942. So we believe there were about um, 12 cohorts, mm -hmm. and at first there were these groups of 50, and those were actually very bright, very um, well educated cadets who spoke really good English. Later groups were smaller in number. Totally, there were about 866 pilots that were sent here to train from China. So they fly from sun up to sundown, ceaselessly, tirelessly learning, blasting away at the targets, waiting for the day when they could return to China, and with the force of the United Nations behind them, hurl themselves against the Japs.觉得呢，我二叔呢，就像从那个墓碑后面慢慢走出来了，还是那么年轻，因为他牺牲的时候才二十五岁啊，就像我在家里的老照片看到的那样。那我就立刻想到爷爷，也就是在六十年代为了二
校友通讯录啊，辅仁大学的校友通讯录啊，都放在那个棺材里。这个墓地向着太平洋。我们把我妈棺木下葬的时候，我先生还说了一句：“这就是向着中国的。”如果我一个人到那个温哥华那个墓地，我就会跟爸爸妈妈讲许多话。我会告诉我的爸爸妈妈，我对不起你们，我真的是对不起，特别是我的爸爸。然后我会告诉他，你们放心，我已经把二叔找到了，还有一些二叔呢，还在陆续的找，已经找到三十几个了哈。这个也是我自己想帮大家找到亲人的一个动力吧。Thank you for watching. Please support us in making this documentary, My 58 Uncles. I'm already looking forward to watching the full film. It's really touching. So now we are going to have our sec second panel section: Chinese sacrifices and contributions to the America. Moderated by Diane Nadine. Diana, please come up to the stage and introduce your panelist, please. Okay. So now we are going to come into our panel. Discussion. Let me invite our panelists to the stage.、Uh, our assembly member Ken Sun Chu from 2014 to 2020 to the stage, please. <laughs> you can sit here. Yeah, sit here. And and Director Ming Zhou, please come to the stage. Thank you. And An Li, the author, to the my fifteen ankles, yeah, to the stage, please. Thank you. Okay.、Uh, it's such a great honor when we watch this film, and we're so touched. So it's not only your ankle; it's everybody's ankle. It's my ankle. It's everybody's ankle. That is that right? Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, and for coming and stay with us for so long. I know that many of you are so busy, and you sacrifice your family time and coming to this. And I really want to show my appreciation appreciation to all of you. So let's start this.、Uh, so the first question will be for An Li. So An Li, actually, you wrote the book Die Young and. And forgotten in the in the states, your second uncle, who passed away、uh, at at age of twenty five, with a group of the、uh, you know young Air Force being trained in in the United States. So, what made you started this research and writing this book?、Uh, this is starts from twenty eighteen. Uh, since I was I was young, and、uh, I know I have an uncle, and、uh, joined the Air Force, died in the United States, but、uh, my parent never told us why he's there and why how he died. So until we、uh, went to、uh, went abroad and start to study, and then my As an uncle in our family in China, just、uh, asked us to start to looking for, searching for the second uncle. Then all our family start to、um, try our best until we found the uncle、mm, from uh, another uh, rel relatives in Taiwan. 
and uh, found my uncle buried in El Paso, Texas. So after that, and uh, many of our family members, my cousin, my brother, and uh, all went there. Until like uh, 2008, I was there and uh, found uh, there are so many Chinese Air Force buried in the Texas. In their headstone, there are no flower so lonely for more than 78 years. So I swear in front of my uh, uncle's headstone, I just say, I need to bring all your comrades back home. So after that, and uh, we just uh, start the search. Thank you for sharing this touching story, and thank you for this uh, effort. I think this has totally changed your, your life, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, but thank you. And so Assembly Member Ken Sin Chu, you know, he's been very active in our community, but uh, very few people know that his father is also one of the cadets, belongs to the class 15 as a Chinese Air Force, got trained in the United States. Not only that, and his family relatives, his uncle's, uh, his, uh, his auntie's uncle, Mom, yeah. your, your mom's, your, your mother's uncle, your mother's uncle is Sun Li Ren Jiangjun, Sun Li Ren. So we all know that a very famous commander uh, leading the, the troop against the Japanese at, uh, during the World War II. So that's uh, the story never told, and, and please share with us something about that. Okay, first of all, thank you very much for coming. It's really an honor to share the stage with three of the, uh, uh, my very admirable uh, ladies. And, and Yan, I just learned that uh, he actually was referred to by General Stilwell's uh, grandson uh, when, when she was doing the research of the book. And uh, uh, John Easterbrook mentioned that, hey, there's a, 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 a set state assembly member and his father was one of the flying tigers. So that's how we, we met. And uh, uh, I, I think at that time, we're trying to uh, get this family member to come to the United States. And they have some uh, visa issue, right? And then we'll have to write a, a letters to allow those family members to, to come to the United States. Um, uh, to my regret, I didn't join her to visit Fort Blitz in, in, in Texas. I know they're buried uh, 54? 52. In 52. Texas. Other five uh, in Georgia. Alabama, Georgia. Georgia. In, yeah. in Georgia, five in Georgia. Yeah. So 52 in Fort Blitz. And I also learned his second uncle, uh, uh, Li Jia He, was in the same class of my father. Mm -hmm. They actually came to the United States on the same boat. You know, so a lot of those journey that my father never shared with me, I have to learn it from her, from her book. I truly, truly admire her effort. I mean, there was so many obstacles that really beyond your imagination. Because when they carved the, uh, the, the, the uh, tombstone, the gravestone, sometimes they missed one uh, letter. They misspelled the, the, the uh, letter. Uh, of those uh, fallen cadet, and and the family members in China, because of the misspelling, will not w want to recognize. They say, "No, I don't want to recognize. This is not my my uh, ancestor. This is not my father. This is you know not my uncle or whatever." So they have to put in so much effort to co to f go through the file and to verify that this is your family member, and just because they, w they s misspelled or they whatever, they made a mistake on, 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 on your name, but this is really your family member to unite uh, so many family members. And I, I read from the book, they, because of the war, uh, after the, 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 the Civil War, right, after the, the, the uh, 1939, so many family members are se separated, and and the end actually united them together, you know, because during in her effort to to search for the family member of those 58 uh, falling cadets. So she, uh, you know, I 
um, I got a book from her, uh, an autographed book from her, and I also uh, bought, I don't know, my many books and share with my brothers and share with my friends. And it's, this is really a, a must-read book, and you learn so much about the, the suffer, the atrocity that happens, the challenge that our, our the, the Chinese or China as a nation suffer during that period of time. So I'm really, really uh, happy to be here with uh, with all of you. And um, uh, uh, Diana mentioned that my grand uncle, my mother's uncle, is General Sun Li Ren. How many of you uh, uh, learned about? Knows, heard about General Sun Li Ren. Oh, okay. We got we got a few <laughs> hands. Yeah, yeah. This is because uh, he fought shoulder to shoulder with General Stilwell uh, in the CBI Theater. Uh, s how many of you heard about CBI Theater? Right. Because when we when you learn about well, it, this is the uh, Chinese. I mean the Americans. Our students here, uh, when they learned about the World War II history, they learned a lot about the European theater, what happens in Europe, you know, the D-Day, the, the so on and so forth. The only two pages talk about the Pacific theater, and there's a few sentences talk about the rape of Nanking, which you, uh, you, you saw on, in the movie. But there's really no word to describe what happens in the CBI theater. The CBI theater is really a major theater that turned the Sin uh, Sino-Japanese war around. The CBI s the theater uh, is really stands for China, Burma, and India. You know, because at that time, the, the, the Chinese uh, um, is pre very much rely on the air transport. To to supply the the the, the civilians or, and the troops uh, in Sichuan, Yunnan, Guizhou, uh, those provinces, but it was a ch very very challenge to fly over the hump, which is the Alps. Uh, Alps. So the supply is very very scarce and very very hard to go to the Houfang, the, the Sichuan uh, pr uh, provinces. So the only way that l later on, when, when Sun Li Ren, they opened up a China-Burma-India highway, the Zhongying Gonglu, and that opened up uh, the, the, the land transport of so many supplies that, that, they, that we can, uh, I think, was first shipped to India and from India, from, from the port, and used the road to transport all those uh, supplies of weaponry and food and whatever to uh, Yunnan, to uh, Guizhou, to Sichuan, to continue to, to uh, for, for the uh, troops and as well as the civilian. So, you know, when I was uh, um, working for uh, Senator Elaine Alquist, we well, have a proposal, we, we actually passed the, uh, the Senate House to increase the, the in the U.S. history in, in the United States to increase more um, history in the uh, Pacific theater and include some of the, 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 the stories and, and the triumph that, that the U.S. troops and the Chinese troops got jointly achieved during the CBI theater. But um, due to a strong opposition from the Japanese government, you know, and, and uh, that bill didn't even happen, didn't pass the, uh, the the assembly house. So this is something that I think um, that we can all continue working on it, and hopefully we we can teach our generation about the uh, history, about the World War II, and w I truly believe uh, that the reason we're doing that is to make sure that the history will not repeat itself, because this is a very, this is a human atrocity. I think I go over my t time limit, and thank you very much for not <laughs> giving me, me the, uh, the cue. So.
No, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kershen Chu. Um, so you are, this is so important that we tell this story to our next generation. And today we're so happy that we have uh, our next generation young men sitting there. And we have so many, yes, uh, yes, our young audience sitting in the audience. Thank you so much for coming and uh, learn about this case history so you can tell your next generation in the future. <laughs> right. Okay. So. Uh, the, the question will be for our director here. I know that as a researcher for the Chinese history, you ha probably got so many materials, so many stories, and so many people talking to you, uh, but you choose this story from An Li's book. Um, so what touched you most of the stories from this book? Well, um, when I read the book, uh, by Anjie, I was touched by the stories of those young people. Think about that. We all have our 20s, right? For all my 58 uncles, they died very young. The oldest of them might be just in early of the 30s. The youngest one may be just in their 20s, like 21, 22. Imagine how we looked like when we were 20s. How many dreams we had when we were 20s, right? So. But for them, they just gave up their lives to defend the country, defend the freedom. So I think I just have a, have a mission to finish this film, especially when I stand in front of their headstones with my production team. Each of us have a, a shorter message telling our uncles, we will get this done. Thank you, Susan. Yes, for the great effort. So, and uh, no, we are not. We're 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 telling Asian American stories. So we would like to support in whatever we can, and I also want to call our audience and friends here to work together to support this effort. So, and we have some, you know, next generation young audience here. What do you want to say to them? I think uh, this is an uh, unforgotten history of Chinese uh, National Air Force. Because uh, the time when I grew up, what the uh, uh, regression war is uh, totally different. Until I came to abroad, then I learned and uh, the history is should be written in different ways. Mm -hmm. That's why I feel, and uh, at the same time, we try to find their family. And uh, we need to also tell the young generation about the uh, true history. Mm -hmm. And also tell the, keep the, you know, record the history of the American Chinese coordinate together. Mm -hmm. Then finally, you know, spend a lot of their effort and uh, their young life. Mm -hmm. Then got the victory of the regression war. Mm -hmm. Without a uh, flying tiger, you know, fighting with the Japanese, without uh, America send the 14 Air Force to China and uh, bring this young Chinese Air Force to America to learn flying and then come back, fight together, we won't have this today's peace. This is what I need to tell the young generation. Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, uh, let me ask the last question to our director, and then I will go give the microphone to Dennis here uh, to ask the question. So, I know that you are producing the next film uh, about Flying Tiger, Born to Fly, right? Tell us something about that. Okay, so for my third documentary, which temporarily titled Born to Fly, which about the Chinese American flying tiger pilots. Mm -hmm. So we all know that um, General Shano led the first generation flying tiger pilots in early 1940s, right, to fight for China. However, after that, after the one year contract ended, the uh, China still, you know, was still in the war and uh, General Shano was called back to China two years later. So starting from 1943, all the way to 1945, until the end of the war, there was not a 
there were not a lot of Chinese American pilots fighting in China. So, and they got very, very little exposure. So this is also a hidden history for me. So I say, I, I said to myself, I just need to tell their stories. And some of them still living in the Bay Area. So that film is dedicated to those heroes. Like, if in terms of, of the age, they, I, I could call them my grandfather, but I would call them flying tiger pilots. Thank you, May. Thank you so much. So uh, we're going to open the Q&A for 10 minutes. So if you have any questions, then please raise up your hand. I'll reach you. I'll give the microphone to you. Yes, Dan is here. Please. So my, my question is, what are you guys doing on Wednesday, September 13th, the afternoon? <laughs> uh, and that's a loaded question because we will have 24 scholars from China, young people, college kids. They're part of what they call the morning side group. We've been asked to take them around the Bay Area. And I, I've been looking for something to take them to, to show them, to inspire them. They have been selected from about 3,000 students in China. And, and this is an annual thing. I was very inspired by this story. And I would love to have the three of you, if you're available, in the afternoon, because we're going to be in Fremont first, and come over here in the afternoon, for us to show them this film, to talk to them. And maybe they can help research if they're inspired as I am. I've gone through a whole Kleenex, all right, just after I watched this film. No, the 13th of September. In the afternoon, possibly. We have to be in Fremont at 1.30, so we'd probably be here by 4 o'clock. We'd come here to the studio, and, and we were looking to do something, and I was just, as I was thinking about this, Diana, I, this is, <laughs> sorry to ambush you with it. Yeah, and, and I think it would be a great opportunity. The, these are young scholars, all right? They, they, many of them, after, in the past trip, they end up coming back to get their master's right. degree. Right. They end up being road scholars. In fact, one of the students is at Stanford right now. I, I think that if we want to push this forward, we should tell the story to young people in China, students, so that they can carry the story forward. Because that is what we need, all right? We need to remember that there was a time when we all worked together in unity, all right, against the Japs. All right. All right. Do, uh, do you know the way to San Jose? Well, I would just extend my invitation for you to bring the students to San Jose and visit our uh, uh, Chinese historical CHCP cultural project. And uh, we have well, uh, a we temple. We have a bus. So they're here that last day. Yeah, we'll have some CHCP so member here. And we need uh, the three of you to tell the story. I, okay. We'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. Yes. Hi, so I'm Jeff Lee with uh, SF Cause and Y Yang Club, and I just received from uh, then Assemblyman uh, Kevin Mullen last year the honorary recognition for the 80th year anniversary of the Flying Tigers. Uh, our club was founded by a handful of the Flying Tigers. Y Yang Club in Ch loose English means Golden Eagle or Chinese American. So I'm programming to celebrate the Flying Tigers this year in uh, San Francisco Chinatown. And uh, we'd like to express our program and include you as well. And I invite you to our club because our club is uh, all from that era. And we want to bring this education out to the generations, to the future. And thanks to our California state legislation, we received it last year. Thank you. This, uh, two events are so relevant. Thank you so much for coming, and thank you for your service. Yes, okay, so, oh yeah, we got two friends here. So the lady first, and then you pass the two. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that I saw that there are Chinese and English subtitles for this trailer. 
And I do find it really important that it be kept in <laughs> um, so that my parents who speak Cantonese or more specifically Taishanese, um, I want them to be able to understand the film. <laughs> Uh, that's all. Thank you so much. Do you want the Do you want me do the Taiwanese version? <laughs> if you can, if you want to, that would be that's great. That's challenging. <laughs> but no, I, I, I try. Yeah, I try. I, I appreciate that Thank there you. is Chinese subtitles. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, my friend KG here. Uh, I wanted to thank the filmmaker and the writer for your fantastic uh, narrative storytelling memorializing of the history. But I also wanted to ask you, how do you situate this current narrative uh, within the current historical moment where the U.S. is trying to provoke a war with China using Japan? is to the author of the books, right, or the producer of the movie. Yeah, but I, I think, um, I'll, I'll take a first shot at it. I think it is most important uh, at, this, at this juncture that we um, uh, highlight this, uh, uh, some success story of the Chinese uh, uh, army or Chinese uh, fought uh, shoulder to shoulder with uh, American troops. And, and that's why it's some of our uh, family members and her relatives in Anhui, we actually form a nonprofit organization just to a uh, World War II CVI theater exhibit. And we wanted to uh, uh, produce some, some, some uh, xuanzi sort of exhibit and try to promote uh, the, the to cooperation between the two nations during the war. And, and because of uh, our effort, you know, both on both sides, we make the world um, mo more peaceful, at least peaceful for the la last 70 some years. So I think it is really, really important to have those uh, 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 movies and the books to highlight the cooperation of the two nations. Yeah, I yeah. think. Uh, uh, one thing is very important, just uh, like I uh, emphasized before, that can seem true, and uh, we shouldn't forget the war, and uh, also shouldn't uh, let it uh, repeat it. So this is uh, all our effort, great effort. Mm -hmm. We have to work for world peace instead of uh, continue with the fight. So that's why we need to remember all those who fight for the world peace. Mm. Then, you know, let the young generation know about history. That's yeah. very important. Yeah, thank you, Anne. Actually, KJ is a uh, award-winning journalist and uh, for many years, a oh. uh, great researcher for the geographic politics uh, oh. between uh, East and West, especially China and the United States. So you are the expert. Next time we should get you on the stage <laughs> to talk right. about this. Yes. And, and Diana, if I may add, yes. I mean, I really appreciate, thank you very much for the question. I think the responsibility is felt on every one of us. Mm -hmm. I encourage you to um, promote this uh, a movie, and I encourage you to buy more of Anne's book and pass it out to uh, your your friends and relatives, and, and your your books is not in English yet. We could we could work working on the English. So version. so far the book is Chinese. Oh. So far the my book is written in Chinese, and mm. because that's uh, more easier for me. Mm. But uh, many people question why not uh, write an English version. So I'm thinking about that okay. mm. and uh, trying to not directly translate, but uh, write put some more content into that oh, okay. about a joint effort between you know United States and Chinese people. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Thank okay. you. Well, let's thank give you. Her a bigger round of yes, that. thank you. <laughs> so we could question to Yeah, my question is uh, towards uh, Lian. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, present this because uh, I visited the cemetery every year. And uh, oh, 
Yeah. My question is, do things, like, like I said, I, I visit the cemetery every year. Yeah. And I don't know how, how many years I, I, I can do that. And it's just, I don't know how many more people is going to do that. Did the Chinese government that they have any plan to repatriate those that, uh, their, their you know, graves move back to China? Because that, uh, like we know, in the United States, they still try to find all the remains from different wars and bring them back to the United States. The China the Chinese government that they have any plan to bring those uh, the fifty seven fallen back to China? Uh, that's the very difficult things, you know. Even Chinese government want to bring the remain to China, and the U National Cemetery of U.S. need to do lots of DNA. And uh, I was told because during the process we are looking for the family and uh, there's a name different so family member just want to say they must be our uncle but uh, how to convince mm -hmm. because uh, during yes. the cultural revolution all the fact picture whatever you know all destroyed then the family in China they just say we can do the DNA test so I contacted the National Cemetery they say not that easy and they need to go to court. You need to provide uh, enough evidence and then the court decide that you can start, uh, you know, because it's already covered uh, for close to 80 years, right? How you can dig them out, it's not show that uh, respect uh, to them, right? But so far as I know, in Taiwan and uh, last uh, September, Taiwan Air Force already, you know, uh, build uh, some plate in the Bitan Air Force uh, Cemetery. They they have a huge uh, event to do that, at least uh, from Taiwan side. And also, I contacted the local Chinese community and the church. They agree. They say we are Chinese, but live live in the El Paso for a long time. But we never know in the huge uh, cemetery has some of the Chinese uh, Air Force buried there. So they decided to visit them, especially Texas University students, mm -hmm. leading by the professor, and uh, will bring the flower to them, you know. But uh, it's right now, I really appreciate, you know, Wang Li Zheng and uh, already been there twice, right? And uh, he said he will be there every year, and also he showed uh, Facebook, in the Facebook. Because uh, his effort, he did a lot of broadcast in the Facebook. Recently, one of the family found uh, his message, then come to him, say, I'm one of the in the list. So we found that that's the latest uh, 37. Among the 58, 37, family or relative already found. The very last one is found by Wang Li Zheng. Oh. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. um, the history of China and the Philippines um, coming out of World War II, and today is considered VJ Day. There's also an August 30th of the signing on um, the uh, ship, but the Bataan uh, legacy, the death march, uh, will be observed uh, Saturday, September 23rd at University of San Francisco, 10 to 4, and the most preeminent scholar of the Pacific theater of World War II is Richard Frank. His book is Tower of Skulls, and he will be there in person. Okay. Thank you. Great job. Okay. Yes, this uh, almost coming to the end of our panel discussion. Again, I want to thank you, but don't go yet. Uh, later on, uh, we're gonna, oh, I know that uh, Ming just mentioned about her last documentary film, which Born to Fly, uh, the story about the flying tiger. So we're going to watch a trailer uh, for 10 minutes. But I want to remind you that when you don't record with your cell phone and don't publish on the social media because this film has not been published yet. 
So please respect our director and filmmaker. And after that, we're going to have a group picture. Everybody were invited to the stage, and we're going to have a group picture together with the filmmaker, with the author, with the assembly member, and, and all, all of us together. So let's sit back and enjoy this trailer. Thank you. Uh, squeeze. Yeah, we have to squeeze in order to get everybody here. Okay.